Hello again, and welcome to Six Figure Souls, Doing Good and Making Money, the weekly podcast highlighting entrepreneurs who have crushed that six-figure ceiling and while remaining fully aligned with their soul's purpose. I am your host today, Camille Miller, founder of the Natural Life Business Partnership and pioneer for the soul professional movement. Today, we have Jenny Belanger with us of Jenny B Designs. Hello, Jenny. Hi, Camille. Thank you so much for having me today. You are so welcome. I appreciate you being a part of our podcast and sharing your story with all of our listeners. So um, we met through another networking group, right? We met through the Dames? I think we did. Yes, through the Dames, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I got to know, I don't know, in the past month, it hasn't been that long. We had it and I loved hearing your story and how you were growing and what you were doing. So I thought it would be a great, interview just to share with everyone else. Start us off by telling us what you do, and then I'm going to ask you questions about how it started. So why don't you talk about like what you do now, and then we'll talk about all the little pieces and how you got there. Does that sound good? Absolutely. Um, Okay, so I am the founder and creative director of Jenny B Designs. We are a web design studio. We design money-making websites, like I call them, uh, for female founders and CEOs who are busy running their business, managing their team, and are ready to scale. Beautiful. Okay, now let's let's dive a little deeper on how it started, because a lot of people that are thinking, this is what I'd like to be someday, or this is where I feel like my purpose would be served best, are probably listening to this going, how do I start? What do I do? So I am assuming, like most people here, that you started in a corporate job, working for someone else, (laughs) trading your time for your hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then from there. So can you tell us a little bit about that backstory of um, what you were doing and what made you decide to take that leap into entrepreneurship? Yeah, sure. I actually, so I have a background in non the nonprofit world. That is kind of where I'm from. And I did that for many years. And in the nonprofit world, uh, you know, those who are listening who are familiar with it, you kind of wear a lot of hats and you, yes. you're responsible for doing a lot of things. And one of those pieces, I worked in the marketing department. So one of those pieces was designing websites and online marketing. And it was something that we didn't have money to fund. And so I kind of learned on the job. We needed a website. And so I figured out how to build it. And right. I really, really enjoyed doing that aspect of the job. And so that was about, I would say, 15 years ago. And I, I had so much fun with it. And I knew a lot of other nonprofits that were in a similar situation. So I started designing on the side, just here and there, being available for others to get their online presence um, up and running. And I would say when my first child, my son was born, I knew that continuing full time with nonprofit work was just a little bit too much for me. I, I really wanted balance in my life. And I really enjoy spending time with my family and making sure that I'm there with them. And then I also love having something to do. So I wanted something with a little bit more balance. And that's when I really started to focus on my design business and designing full time. Beautiful. Yeah. And what was the um, beginning like? So you just decided to leave your corporate job or the nonprofit work. My background's in nonprofit too, so that's very interesting. Um, but, but when you just decide, okay, I'm going to do this, how are those first days, months, even the first year of setting your business up, finding clients? And I'm sure you wavered along the way with what exactly you decided to do, because now you're very focused, right? Right. So let's talk about it being wide. And you, uh, I'm assuming, but I want to hear from you that you just wanted to help anyone that would pay you. Yeah, it was like that in the beginning. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, when I, when I first started, um, you know, I was working with a lot of nonprofit clients referral base. So that's where I was finding okay. a lot of people. And I would say I wasn't doing a lot of online marketing or things like that. And, not, and I wasn't doing a lot of networking as well. It's kind of word of mouth working with nonprofits. And I did that for a while. And I would say 
as my kids started to get older, I had more and more time to devote to the business. Okay. And once they started in school full time, I really started to focusing on my marketing and doing some outreach. And that's kind of right when the pandemic started. And I feel wow. like a lot of people were transitioning to online businesses. There were a lot of groups online. People yep. were familiar with that way of working. I always did that, but it wasn't normal until the pandemic. And so I started talking with a lot of women entrepreneurs and finding that they were in a similar position as the nonprofit. They're starting this business. They need to get an online presence set up. They don't know what to do. And I kind of fell into that niche. And once I got there, I really was in love with it. And I said, oh, I love helping women who are like me, who want to get set up online, who have a wonderful service that they want to share with the world. And that's been my main focus since getting started. I just, I, I, it took a while to find that ideal client. And when I found it, I said, oh, those are my people. And that's who I want to work with. And, and I've been working with women entrepreneurs since. And do you still do all the same marketing? Do you do website, copywriting, design work? What is it specifically? Or did you change so, along the way too? Yeah, I, I used to do broad. I would do anyone. I would do whatever they needed, whatever they wanted, email marketing, set it all up. And I've really honed my process and I do money-making websites. So I do the website design and development from start to finish. And okay. that is my main um, focus. So, you know, I, like you said, I would t do anything that anyone wanted. And then yep. as, as I started growing, I said, this is what I do. This is what I do best. Let me perfect it. And that's what I really love to do. Yeah, that's staying in your zone of genius. And if you yeah. love doing it, that's what you should be doing, right? That's, that's yeah. an important piece. Yeah. Um, so as you started to grow, and it sounds like it's fairly new. You said you've done this since the pandemic, which was two years ago. Yes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It just like, it absolutely took off. Um, last year was crazy busy and my team grew. Like it went from me to, to growing a team to two others that I work with. And so, yeah, it's been great. All right. So that's our next question. Who is the first yeah. person you hired? <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, a VA to help me kind of manage all of the extra things that I needed to get done. Um, I knew I needed someone to help me with the design work, but all these other tasks that, you know, social and just getting things out the door, I needed help with the admin work. So that was the first thing that I got help with. And I was resistant as, at first, um, as I'm Everybody sure a lot is. of people are. <laughs> but once I did, it just, it, it was amazing. And it opened up to all kinds of avenues and it was the best decision I could have made. Yeah. And then after that, you, you hire someone to help with the design? Yes. Yes. I just hired a junior designer um, a little bit ago and I've been working okay. with her. So I really love, like I said, I have a process and I love the strategy and the design aspect. And so she's there to kind of be my right hand person to help me execute those designs and make sure that all the, the odds and ends are, are done right. So it's been a, it's been a nice uh, addition to the team. So are you still working with the client on the strategy piece and then your team helps you develop your thoughts yes. about the strategy? Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. I work with the client and I, and I do a lot of the design as well, but she okay. helps me kind of, um, you know, complete the project and, and, and get. Them ah, done. Gotcha. So um, do you have more than two right now or just the, the two? Just the two right now. Okay. Um, but like, you know, we're, it's funny, you were asking me, like, I, I really know that money-making website design is my zone of genius, but, you know, my clients need other things, you know, they need help with blog posts and copywriting and um, logo design, things like that. So I'm always thinking about expanding and bringing on another team member that can help make the project a little bit more fluid and be able to offer my clients another service, just kind of coming to me as a one-stop person. But that is phase two. That, and that's what I'm looking towards. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so what are some roadblocks that you could share that maybe you hit along the way? Mindset. I oh, think like the one. biggest thing is mindset. Mm. I had no idea that mindset was involved with um, running a business, even in a nonprofit world. Yeah. I think I could have benefited from um, doing some mindset work and just understanding that, you know, you have to keep going. And to really put yourself first and make sure that you're taking care of yourself and then your business, um, your business will follow suit if you're really doing the right things for your, for your mind and your spirit. What type of mindset work do you do? 
do you work with a coach in, a, in that way or are you just doing a lot of self-care? I worked with a mindfulness coach. Uh, she's a mindfulness coach for moms. Okay. Uh, last year, Terry Hamilton from A Parent Connection. And she opened my eyes to the world of everything, meditation, um, you know, just taking time for myself and, and gratitude and just noticing your surroundings and things like that. So ever since my time with her, I've been continuing on. I listen to the Insight app and I do meditations and I do journaling. And I just try to really be present in the everyday situations with business and with my family. Cause I find there's a lot of, you know, mm-hmm. overlap with your yeah. mind and it's hard and you need to really be present. So that's a constant work in progress, but it's because of Terry's help is kind of where I am today. Yeah. I find that especially with women entrepreneurs that they need to dovetail their lifestyle and their home and their family and things that are important with their business and it has to be a fit where I feel so many of us have walked two different paths and we've kept our professional life very separate from our personal life and the beauty I think that came out of the pandemic is a lot of people realize wait we have to bring this together right it's just as important to me so let's make all of these priorities and the balance of that a priority yeah absolutely I 100% agree yeah. Yeah. Were you um, spiritual or holistic before all of this? I was raised very Catholic. And I would say that um, ever since my child, I, I haven't been. And then over the past, since my son was born, I would say I've become a little bit more. Absolutely. Um, just thinking about the overall scheme of things and then working on this mindfulness. Yeah, I've, I've definitely been a little bit more in the, in the past couple of years. And what do you think is a driving factor for you? I think wanting to achieve balance and um, harmony in my life, Mm -hmm. in both aspects, in my personal, with my kids and my business. That's really the overall driving force of all this. I want, I want, and you know, everyone says you can't achieve like perfect balance, like that, like it's unachievable, but I strive hard to try to do my best so that I can. Yeah. When I think of balance, people... They use the word balance, but I think it's more a sense of openness of just allowing what's going to happen to happen and and kind of like, I don't think balance is 50-50, right? Balance isn't 50-50. It's not like a seesaw, like, oh, I've spent, you know, 40 hours in my work life. Now I need to spend 40 hours in my personal life and give back to my family, but more of that flow of what feels good you know, to be present in that moment of whatever you're doing. So you're not with your kids thinking of work or on your phone, you're giving all of yourself in that moment. So it's more like a sense of presence than it is a sense of a 50-50 balance. I know we use the word balance, but it's dovetailing that lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly why I started to investigate, um, you know, this mindfulness, because when I'm with my kids, I want to be with them. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be thinking about the five emails that I have and have them running through my head. Maybe like a sense of, of a peace or harmony or something like that is a better um, explanation rather than balance. Yeah. yeah. So it's usually a pretty big journey, although you, it sounds like you've had a fast journey, but it's usually a big journey to it's starting your business and getting to what we call that six figure soul, right? Mm-hmm. What is like one thing that pushed that level, level forward for you, lever? forward for you to go from starting to really um, crushing it, you know, and getting to where you are today. Yeah, it, it was fast. It was fast. I, I think I gained like clarity on my ideal client and, and, and I perfected what I was doing. And I really put all my effort into that and I didn't stop. Um, you know, and I just kept going. And that, I think that was like the jumping point. I mean, I had been doing this for a while, but slowly, you know, it was trickling. And yeah. then I just put all my energy and I knew my focus. And, um, you know, it, and that's kind of where I am right now. So you think it was more focusing on exactly who your client is and not trying to serve I everybody? Think- I really do. And really just knowing who I want to work with and really being clear about what I was offering. And, and a lot of work too, a lot of, 
networking and online marketing. And I mean, everything takes effort, but being clear and having clarity on exactly what I do um, and how I help people was really a really game changer for me. How about your presentation? Like when you meet people, are you doing the presentation in that moment? Are you inviting them back? Are people coming through referral? Like, how are you finding people and then presenting? Because I think that's a big thing. People try to sell right off the bat or they, they're doing it wrong, <laughs> right? So yeah. you might have your message, your perfect client. I think perfecting your client is a mistake that we all make and going a little too wide, right? Mm-hmm. But it sounds like you've narrowed your niche and that usually brings a lot more money. But then when you meet your perfect client, you have to know the funnel and what to say, those words that are making them feel like, okay, I can transform with you. You're providing exactly what I need. I, I think part of the process and what I didn't mention was that when I really started focusing, I always also did a lot of education. So I had a lot of free resources. I had a a lot of free webinars. I really try to help and educate and share. And I think that during that time, a lot of people, you know, got involved with me and learned from me and kept me in mind for when they were ready to invest. And I feel like all that work that I've done a while ago, I'm seeing the results from. And I I really do. I offer like so much value. I I really want to share and a lot of people, you know, some people take it and some people get overwhelmed by it and then they come back to me. Like, I just want to like put it all out there. So I, I find that that was really helpful. And then when they come to me, one of my things is I'm all about simplicity and handholding through the process because I know what I do can be overwhelming. Mm-hmm. So that's the first thing that I do. I reassure them that I really want to help them and I have their back and it's, you know, it's a, a, a partnership and Usually by the time they find me, they, they really know who I am and they, they're ready. They're, they're ready. ready to take the next step. Yeah. That's beautiful. So what do you feel like is the next step for you? Like over the next year or two years, five years, like, what do you see yourself and your company going? I would love to maybe add one more arm to my services. Like I was talking about, yeah. but just, I want to perfect what we offer and find, you know, maybe another designer to help me and just be able to be involved in the strategy and be able to be a part of the project, but less on the execution side. And then um, enjoy, enjoy the business that I built and like not be stressed out about growing and, and being too big and just, just enjoy the ideal clients that I have and the time that I have working in my business. That's I my love goal. that. I love that. You yeah. you sound kind of non-attached to the outcome and you're just staying focused on what you're doing. And I think that's a, actually a great thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you know what's yeah. working and you just keep doing what's working, the money comes and follows. Yeah. I really would like to. And, and again, I, I try to make sure that my business is bringing me happiness and harmony. And, you know, I, I, It's just where I am in life. I just really want to enjoy it, be happy with what I do and work with people that I love. Yeah. I love that. I think joy is like a common thread that we all want to feel. Yeah, absolutely. Absolute joy. Jenny, um, how can people get in touch with you if they're watching this podcast or listening to this podcast and they're saying, oh my gosh, I need to get in touch with that woman? Yeah, uh, I'm on Instagram at Designs, or um, you can find my website, jennyb-designs. Terrific. Well, Jenny, I want to thank you for being a part of our um, podcast today. Yeah, thank you so much, Camille. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. For more information about the Soul Professional Movement, you can go to soulprofessional.com. This podcast is sponsored by the Natural Life Business Partnership, a global professional organization and business incubator for the soul aligned professional. If you live in a higher vibration, have an alternative approach to business and are here to help repair the world, come join us at our next meet and greet to learn more about who we are. You can go to soulprofessional.com to find the next event that works for your time zone. Thanks for listening today.